Here to cheer us up, well, this can't be right, Goober the Clown, who had an abortion when she was 23. <laughs> hey, 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 I'm Goober the Clown. There are so many reasons it's hard to talk about abortion. I wasn't public with my own experience because you just, I don't know how people are going, if, if it's going to change people's perception of me, if it's going to change my family. You know, there's so much stigma around abortion, which I guess is part of the reason I felt like I had to do it. I'm Cecily Strong. I'm a cast member on SNL. I'm Ken Sublette. I'm a co-head writer at Saturday Night Live. I'm Anna Dresden. I was a co-head writer at SNL. And this is Variety's Making a Scene. Goober, you, you had an abortion when you were 23? Hey, whoa, slow down. I'm a clown. Let's clown around. I knew I wanted to talk about women's health care and specifically abortion. I think I wanted to be able to talk about it the entire time I've been on the show and, and never quite figured out how. And especially abortion, it's hard to find comedy. It's hard to talk about in general, but I've always been very vocally pro-choice and pro-health care, I would hope. But I had not spoken about my own experience. Cecily came to both of us with this idea basically fully formed and um, coming at it from a her own experience in a very personal way because like this is a a thing that affects people's lives that you don't talk about that the narrative that's constructed around it just doesn't represent the way that most people who've had an abortion feel about it which is like phew thank god and of course, ab abortion is always in the news. You know, there's always some states trying to limit access for women's reproductive decisions. I guess because it was finally going to the Supreme Court and now a very real possibility that Roe is going to be overturned. I was up late every night just writing and writing and writing things that I wasn't going to do anything with. And it was like, well, I'm either going to keep writing this <laughs> nonsense and never sleep again, or I'll just have to say something on the show. It was one of those weeks where it felt like it had to be addressed in some way. And I got a text from Cecily saying that, you know, she and Anna were going to work on this piece. And I was immediately like, oh, please let me be some part of it, even if it's very tiny. And I will be the first to say like, this was all Cecily and Anna. Um, uh, but it, it, I just immediately knew that that was something that I would love to, you know, be involved with. Gotcha! the day before my 23rd birthday. Okay. It, it seems like you do want to talk about your abortion. Well, actually, I really don't. But people keep bringing it up, so I got to keep talking about freaking abortion. I think the first draft of this was, like, 14 pages, and I sent it to Kent and Cecily and was like, I have to lie down and goodbye. And I was, I didn't see it until table. It was like, I need a freaking break because I'm so upset um, that this is, it would be like if sandwiches became illegal. I'm like, oh, I feel like most people have had one. You know, we wrote it on Tuesday before table read on Wednesday, and I was very nervous about how it would play at the table. It really went well at, on Wednesday, and Kieran Culkin, who was hosting that week, I remember, was so supportive. It made me love him so much immediately, and he was laughing so much, and after he said, he was like, you've got it, you're doing the clown on the show, right? It's a rough subject, so we're gonna do fun clown stuff to make it more palatable. Whee! It was a very emotional thing to, you know, see get written, um, but there was also this funny weird part of it that was like, okay, I had to call props, and like, we want a squirting flower. Yeah, Kent and Cecily were perfect at like, is it like a farting flower or like, a, <laughs> like what can shoot water? I think there are laughs that come from like presentational normal comedy where people understand there's a fourth wall and you're making a joke and ha ha ha. And then there are laughs that come from, oh shit, something is happening in the room right now. I just love having the in-studio audience because people are really smart and can tell when that is happening. Cecily has such a, a sway over audiences and her passion just really comes through. Balloon animal. You want a giraffe? Okay. <laughs> I've called myself a clown in the past before, and it's, you know, doing comedy on TV. I think I am sort of a clown. It's me talking about myself, too. I also think that it spoke to a thing that 
Cecily definitely felt, I'm sure me and Kenta felt and a lot of people who are having to like make comedy or anything light during these unprecedented times <laughs> that it captured the feeling of I'm being a clown while this intense thing is happening and I don't know how to do both. And it was kind of cathartic and nice to have someone say it without having to like put it in subtext. It was nice to just say it out loud. It's a topic that because of, you know, the stigma that's unfairly placed on it, nobody wants to talk about how much further laugh at it. A clown is the way to sneak it in. And if anything, it's like we can do a couple clown gags. And then if it's, if the thing is dying, at least I have a spinning tie. There I was, a poor little clown, all by her itty bitty self. I think we had hoped that maybe people wouldn't make the direct mental connection to the lady in the big comfy couch, but yeah. a few people clocked it. Not that it's, we didn't hear from her, so I'm assuming she's fine. If anything, we just like Lunette's look and she's recognizably female presenting. You're gonna be a clown, that's a good one. This is one of those things that kind of came directly from Cecily. We wanted something that would contrast as much as possible with the subject matter and like quintessential children's birthday clown. It kind of helps sell how stupid it feels to be doing this sometimes <laughs> when the world is burning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Cecily. Cecily, I'm Goober. And I wish I didn't have to do this because the abortion I had at 23 is my personal clown business. But that's all some people in this country want to discuss all the time. Even though clown abortion was legalized in Clown v. Wade in 1973. Here. The reason he calls me Cecily in the middle of it was again to just, I guess, for that meta. So you know, this is me and I'm the clown. and this is my experience and like, no, don't call me Cecily. I'm playing a character. I could have dressed as myself, but I was dressing as a clown because it wouldn't have felt comfortable to just be myself. And again, like there's a protection in it too. Like I'm just a clown. You can't get mad at me. Hey, hey, did you know one in three clowns will have a clown abortion in her lifetime? You don't, cause they don't tell you. They don't even know how to talk to other clowns about it. Cause when they do talk about it, if you were a clown who wasn't the victim of something sad like clown says, they think your clown abortion wasn't a righteous clown abortion. I mean, what the dick is that? <laughs> I'm wearing a red nose. I know I look ridiculous. It's just like, and this is what I have to do to say this. And I wish I didn't have to do that. Fighting for abortion rights, it's up there with one of the most exhausting, you know, it's like, there's never been a day you can take a day off. It's exhausting to have to explain your own decision. You know, like how many times you have to go, would you like to hear about my sex life or something very personal when I was 22 years old? Do, do you need to know that information? Why would I need to share that with anybody else? And calling any kind of like human equality politics is also exhausting. That you're like, no, where the money gets spent on which road is politics. If I have a right to exist and like go to work or be a mother and when is not politics. I need you to laugh so hard, like the way I laugh when the doctor asked if I got pregnant on the way over to the clinic because I wasn't very far along. And that is one of my favorite jokes to this day. I love that joke. It's such a good joke. Not like a funny haha -ha joke, but like a funny you're not an awful person and your life isn't over now joke. The best kind. A honka honka. It's one of those moments you have at SNL where the audience you don't know what's going to happen. It's like this excited energy that you feel them joining you halfway and like yeah. getting it and enjoying it and being mad and sad and laughing. And then just like especially being in total control of all of that. There's the table and then there's the run through and then dress and then air. So we did it four times total. And it sort of was the same every time where people, they start out kind of confused where it's like, well, this seems like this could go wrong a thousand <laughs> ways. You can't do that. I wasn't really paying attention to how it was playing. I'll be honest. It was just kind of like, go, 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 you know, but it wasn't really until afterwards watching it and hearing how people had responded that there was a, a moment where it clicks in for a lot of people that it's like, oh, she's talking about herself. I was really happy with how it turned out and, and how people heard it. 
Woo! <laughs> I'm not a clown. And in the waiting room, they had a little guest book where all the clowns could write their clown abortion story for the next clown to read it so she wouldn't feel so alone. A wooga! You know, there's so much stigma around abortion, which I guess is part of the reason I felt like I had to do it, where it's like, I didn't want to be yelling at anyone or preaching, but just saying, this is how common it is and someone you love has had an abortion. And the point is, with abortion is that it's personal, you know, and that it is your personal, it is privacy in the end, and it isn't something you want to share, and it should feel weird to have people have to share it with you. There's that. And then also I had worked at Planned Parenthood in 2008, 2009, and I was a receptionist and I opened the mail. And so I'd read all the hate mail and I, you know, we got a bullet in the mail. And when I was working there, Dr. Tiller was murdered. I was upset that I was scared because I, I felt brave doing it. And then I felt like, I wish I didn't feel scared because I want to feel powerful in this moment, but I did feel scared. And then years later, you'll be at a dinner with a big group of clowns and one clown will go out on a limb and say she's had an abortion. And then like eight other clowns at the table say they've had an abortion too, because that's how common it is. And then everyone's excited and relieved to be talking about it. Then it's like, wow, we kept this secret for so long, despite being so grateful it happened. Honk, 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 honk. <laughs> that's absolutely a universal experience. Even doing Goober, then all of a sudden, you know, my mom's talking to me about any of her experiences, my stepmom, people I work with, all of a sudden you realize there's so many of us. It's just like a thing that you are so used to not sharing. This is for people who have had abortions or people who are just people to feel more normal about it or people who are going to have them or people who are thinking about having it. I've never been like, wow, this comedy really gonna change the world. It's more like if people feel um, guilty or on the fence or just like alone or weird when they think about it, it's like, you don't have to. It's crazy because it is as common as it is and is as secret as it is. And there's such a loneliness in that secrecy. Clowns have been helping each other and their pregnancy since the caves. It's gonna happen so it ought to be safe, legal and accessible. <laughs> We will not go back to the alley. I mean, the last thing anyone wants is a bunch of dead clowns in a dark alley. Goober the clown, everyone. Yeah, better disable comments from this one. And the most important comments for me were from people who said from another clown. And I remember um, I got one letter, then this woman said, that must have been hard and thank you for doing it. I'll never be able to do it. If anything, I thought, so many people maybe today on that Sunday are having a conversation that they didn't think they'd get to have. This is why I stayed another year at SNL. Even though it's scary, it's like, that's why we did it. This is the thing I'm most proud of. I wouldn't say like, com this is the funniest or anything like that, but in terms of having a platform and in terms of writing something and without having a lot of time and did you say what you wanted to say? Did you say enough? Did you say too much? It felt like a good mix. Uh, we got a lot of support. I'm happy with how it turned out. And um, it is, I'm, I'm really proud of it and I'm proud of the show and I'm proud to be part of a show that we can do that. <laughs>